So we will start uh, with a very general high level introduction of the two softwares that we came here to learn more about, which is the MaxQuant and Perseus. And these are the two softwares that we're actually um, developing in the group. And uh, they have distinct functionalities. So different things what uh, MaxQuant does and the different things is um, Perseus is doing. So let's see uh, what they're doing. So MaxQuant is responsible for the identification and the quantification of peptides, proteins, and PTMs. And then uh, Perseus is responsible for the downstream analysis of the output tables of MaxQuant. So more specifically, what are you going to do with MaxQuant? MaxQuant will analyze the raw mass spectrometry data that you get from mass spectrometers. Uh, so for example, you have your sample and you run it through uh, the mass spectrometer, then the mass spectrometer will give you some files that have all the spectra there. Then you have to use these raw files um, to analyze uh, them with some proteomic software. And MaxQuant is one of these softwares that you can use. And then, uh, yes, you put as an input these raw files that you got from the mass spectrometer and MaxQuant will do uh, everything. Uh, so actually what it will do, it will identify the peptides by using a specific search engine that we developed in the lab that is called Andromeda. So first, identification of the peptides, and then also it will do the quantification at different levels. So we have quantification at peptide level, protein level, and PTM level. And all of this information, you're going to, you're going to get it summarized in different uh, output tables. So when MaxQuant will finish, you will have a list of output tables and each one of these output tables will give you information in a different level. So for example, let's say uh, you want uh, the identification information in protein, protein groups level, then you have to go to the protein groups TXT5 to get this information. But let's say also you want uh, the information uh, in a feature level. So then you have to go to the evidence TXT file table. Actually, we have like um, uh, a specific like presentation about the output tables because it's quite important because it's what you get from MaxQuant. So you should be able to understand which table it's which. So we will have another presentation just talking about the output tables. So yes, uh, another thing that we have in MaxQuant that is uh, quite nice um, as a feature is that we have something that is called the viewer. So actually, even before you run uh, your raw files, you can go to the viewer and you can see the spectra there. Of course, it's just peaks, so it's just, it, they're not annotated because you didn't run anything in MaxQuant yet, but still you can see uh, everything, all the spectra there. Then after you actually run everything and MaxQuant finishes running, then you can go back to the viewer. And then you can go back to the viewer and actually see the spectra. And now you can see actually the identified spectra. So the peaks are going to be annotated now, uh, which I think is nice actually. And actually it's more or less fair for you as a user because uh, MaxQuant identified these peptides, but now it's on your hand also to go back and let's say inspect them if you want to. Of course, like manual inspection is not what we suggest, but if you want to do it, you can do it using the viewer. Uh, so yes, so this is what MaxQuant does. And now MaxQuant gave you the list of the output tables, but of course, this is there is so much information there that you have to get the important information out of these uh, data sets. So that's why we create Perseus. So create the Perseus, uh, for the user to be easier to get this information out of your the output tables of the max quant. So Perseus will get as an input the, the output tables, any of the output tables of max quant, and it will do all of different things, like a list of different things that we can do in Perseus. You can do statistical analysis. Uh, also, you can any like plot that you probably want to make, uh, probably Perseus can do it. Uh, so you can actually visualize your data. You can do like, I don't know, dimensionality reduction. You can do any clustering uh, there. And uh, yeah, 
So another thing is that, uh, so I said that a Perseus text has input the output tables of max quant, which is true, but it's not the whole truth. You can in, uh, use as an input in Perseus any kind of table. And if it's a tab separated file, you'd use it as an input in Perseus. So not only the output tables of max quant. Uh, and this is great uh, also for the proteomics data set because now you can put the output tables of max quant, but also you can put uh, uh, other uh, tables, let's say genomics data set for the same sample that you used, and you can integrate both integrate both of these data sets together to get more information out of it. So I think also that's a great thing that Perseus does. Uh, and yes, so as I said before, uh, we're not going to talk, so today is a Max Quant Day and specifically a DDA Max Quant Day, but we have a lot of tutorials uh, about Perseus and about the theory, uh, like the, uh, the last two days. So today is about Max Quant. So let's see the data sets that we can run in Max Quant. So in general, we are running uh, in Max Quant only shotgun proteomics data sets, so bottom up not uh, top down. Uh, so as Dinsho uh, presented, we can analyze both DTA and DIA uh, data sets. So yeah, because I think there is, I don't know if it's the misunderstanding, uh, but you should know that we can actually analyze both of them, both DTA, but also DIA data. Tomorrow, way more information about how Max Quant deals with DIA data. But uh, yeah, today is about DDA data sets. Also about quantification. So we can do all uh, different kinds of quantification in MaxQuant. You can do a uh, label free. You can analyze MS1 level labeling data sets and MS2 level uh, labeling data sets. And actually MaxQuant has different algorithms of how to uh, do the quantification in each one of these quantification, these data sets. And today you will see uh, why we're using different uh, algorithms to quantify each one of these different data sets. So yes, later I will talk about the labeled um, um, data sets and how we do the quantification. And then Carlo will continue with the label free quantification. Uh, so yeah, if you're curious, you can actually go to MaxQuant and you can see actually the data sets that we can run. I don't know if this is the first uh, time that you see in this presentation of the Max Quant how it looks like, but this is like a screenshot. Uh, but in general, if you're curious, you can go to group specific parameters under type. And then there is a drop down menu where, we do, where you can see all the different data sets that we can run. So, yeah, as we discussed, we can run, first of all, DDA and DIA. Uh, data sets, you can run MS2 uh, level labeling data sets and MS1 label free. You can run Boxcar. You can run, of course, Ein Mobility data sets uh, and FAMES as well. But uh, also, you can refer to Astral data sets. So, very soon we will uh, have a new version out that we can actually um, analyze. Uh, astral uh, data sets if you're lucky enough to have any. Um, yeah, so um, now that we talked a little bit about uh, the basics uh, in high level about max quant, now we're going to continue with uh, the identification. So when you are um, when you are using a, a protomic software, it's very important I think as a user to know how uh, the algorithms the algorithms that they're using to do the two things, the identification and the quantification. So let's see how the peptide identification happens in max quant. So first of all, we can do two types. Uh, we can identify peptides uh, with two different algorithms. Uh, we have algorithms that they are doing the database search, and but also we can do de novo sequencing. And uh, in case you're not aware of the differences uh, between these two types of um, searching to identify uh, peptides, when we're using database search, 
you're actually uh, using not only the spectra that you get for the mass spectrometer, but also you use some prior information that you get from your sample. Uh, so you're using usually uh, the FASTA file that is a, has a list of the proteins that you expect to have in, in your sample. So this is the database search. And um, we have uh, a specific search engine in MaxQuant that is called Andromeda to do that. Uh, and the, the difference uh, now, the de novo sequencing, sequencing, we will not use any prior knowledge. We will only use the information that we get from the spectrum and nothing else. And we have another algorithm in MaxQuant that is called MaxNovo. Uh, so yes, in this uh, presentation, we're gonna talk about the Andromeda, so the database search and how uh, this is working with DDA uh, data, but uh, we will have uh, also another presentation about MaxNovo. So um, on Wednesday, uh, Dima will present uh, the algorithm. So yes, now before I start talking about the um, uh, workflow and how um, the identification happens in MaxQuant, I want to talk about something that I, uh, while I was uh, practicing my slides, I saw that I'm going back and forth talking about these things. So I think it's a good idea to talk about it now so you're aware of what I'm talking about. So uh, when you have your mass spec data, it doesn't mean that uh, one peptide will give you only one peak. Actually, what usually happens is that one peptide will give you more than one peak. And this uh, is because of uh, different reasons. For example, you can have uh, the same peptide with different charges in your data. So that's by definition means that you will have more than one peaks uh, that correspond to the same peptide. But the most important, and why we say that one peptide doesn't mean one peak, is that the fact that the peptides uh, come into isotope patterns in your spectrum. Uh, so you will not have only one peak, but like multiple peaks that will create an isotope envelope. So yeah, that's, an, uh, and this is because um, like the elements that you have in your peptides uh, come in nature, in, in the nature, they come in different um, isotopes. So you ex this is something that uh, it's expected. And Maybe people like when I when you when you see that probably you will be like okay that will make uh, Max Quant working a little bit harder to because now you have more uh, peaks and you have to know which peaks correspond to one peptide and I mean it is uh, true that maybe it's, it makes the analysis a little bit harder but it gives us a lot of advantages because from the isotope pattern we can get a lot of information we, we can make. Um, a lot of uh, our algor algorithms uh, be more accurate. Uh, so you will see what I'm referring to later. But uh, one of the most important information that we can get from the isotope pattern is the charge. So just by uh, see the difference between the distance between consecutive peaks, we can actually get uh, the charge information out of it. And this is quite important. But not only that, you can we will see later how we can use the isotope pattern into uh, into advantage, into our advantage. So, okay, so now let's go to the workflow. Uh, for the identification in MaxQuan, it's uh, nice to remember that we have two branches. One branch corresponds to the experimental uh, data, data and one branch corresponds to the theoretical data. And now when I will finish with the workflow, you will understand that we have these two branches. So let's go through the workflow. So of course you start with your sample and then you have to extract the proteins from your sample. Then you have to digest the proteins into a peptide and then you're going to have the MS1 uh, level spectrum. And from this, you're going to select, not you, I mean, you can also do it, but uh, the mass spectrometer will actually choose uh, the peptide uh, the peak that is going to select, isolate, and fragment further to create the MSMS spectrum. So here, let's say that you are going, not you, mass spectrometer will, you, will select this uh, specific uh, peak uh, that corresponds to a peptide. 
uh, and we know the m over z. I said before that one uh, peptide doesn't mean one peak. And from this actually plot that I'm showing you, it looks like it's, it is one peptide, it, it is one peak. But this is like, think about it like it's a very zoom out, like look into the MS1 spectrum. If you zoom in, actually it's an actual isotope pattern. It's not just one peak. Uh, and from the isotope pattern, we can get the information of the charge. And then uh, we, um, the mass spectrometer will fragment everything and it will give you the MSMS spectrum. So this is the experimental branch. Uh, and at the end of the experimental uh, branch, we have like um, uh, a list of uh, MSMS experimental spectra. Now let's go to the theoretical branch. So why we need a theoretical branch? So to be able to identify uh, this, uh, the peptide that we have the MSMS um, spectra for, uh, of, of course, as we said, we can use de novo sequencing and we can use only the information that we get from this spectrum to identify it, but this is quite um, difficult to do. Uh, so we found a way out of it. Uh, we are going to cheat a little bit uh, and we're going to use some prior information. What this information is, since we are doing um, database search, you understand that it has to do with a database. So we usually know, uh, we have our sample and we usually know the organism that we got the sample from. So we can use this information uh, because now we know what proteins we expect to have in our sample based on the just the organism will exclude a lot of other proteins. So we're going to use uh, the database from the organism that uh, our sample comes from. I mean, of course, if you don't know uh, the organism that your sample came from, or for example, if it's an extinct uh, organism, then this is a different question and you have to deal uh, with it in a different way. But uh, most of the cases you already know